Hey buds, time to bring this meeting into session. How's everybody doing today? We have a few different books to review today, so let's just get straight into them. Here's the order that I'll be going in. Allegiant by Veronica Roth. High Anxiety, Life with a Bad Case of Nerves by Kat Kinsman. Bad Romance by Heather Demetrios. Grim Lovelies by Megan Shepard. All We Have to Fear, Psychiatry's Transformation of Natural Anxieties into Mental Disorders by Alan V. Horwitz. How We Saw the World by C.J. Taylor. Norgood Tales, Folk Tales from Norway, Sweden, Finland, Iceland, and Denmark by Folk Tale. Just Friends by Tiffany Pickcock. Alright, so first up, Allegiant by Veronica Roth. I'm not going to lie, I was crying by the end of this book. It's brilliant, though still not as good as the first book, but definitely still one of the tops. Some of you may think that I'm biased, but Veronica Roth is my favorite author for a reason. I first fell in love with her Carve the Mark duology, and for years I've been putting off reading this series since I since it was turned into a movie, and I had a personal rule of not reading books that were already turned into movies. But it's not like I was going to watch anytime soon, and I'm glad, and I'm glad that I read this series. 92 out of 100. I highly recommend that you all read this book. Second, High Anxiety, Life with a Bad Case of Nerves by Kat Kinsman. I love the format of this book. It was told like an autobiography, and yet was still entertaining like most fictional stories. There was a lot that I related to in this book, and a lot that I learned as well. I mainly read this book because I have severe anxiety, and I wanted to learn more about my symptoms as well as read on other people's experiences and lives. There's also the case that I learned that I will never go on medications. 83 out of 100. I highly recommend that you read this book, especially if you're interested in minds and the thinking processes of others. Third, Bad Romance by Heather Demetrios. When I say oh my god, I mean oh my fucking god this book was amazing. This book taught me so much on the red flags of relationships, and I especially learned a lot since I'm, since I'm reading it and not experiencing it. Something else that I loved about this book is that the author gave resources at the end of the book for help centers for people facing dom- f- domestic abuse. I was especially in love with Gideon. Though I can't tell you all why for spoiler reasons, but just know that I absolutely love Gideon. Hell, when I was reading this book in class, I was gasping every few minutes. I was smiling, I was laughing, I was crying, I was even cussing out the abusive asshole under my breath. Hell, I was even sending pictures of certain pages to my friends who was like, Look! Look at how amazing, adorable, and amazing Gideon is! 90 out of 100. I recommend every single one of you go to you of you go to I highly recommend every everything single ev- there's a spelling error in my script give me a second it's messing with my brain okay I highly recommend every single one of you to read it if you're not triggered by certain things that take place in negative relationships there we go there's just a random period thrown in there. I was most likely not paying attention as writing. Anyways. Fourth, Grim Lovelies by Megan Shepard. I especially loved the end of this book, though it was a little upsetting how the main character didn't end up being the animal that I thought they were. But I guess that the uh, but I guess the author's take on it was good. The ending also sparks so much imagination for the reader and all the possibilities that could occur before they read the second book. 75 out of 100. I recommend it. Fifth, All We Have to Fear, Psychiatry's Transformation of Natural Anxieties into Mental Disorders by Alan V. Horwitz. This book was formatted so nicely. The sections weren't too long and it was all easy to understand. I've learned a lot through reading this book and I believe that you will learn quite a bit too. It'll also help you gain an understanding into the people around you that have anxiety. 82 out of 100, I'd recommend it for you all. 6. How We Saw the World by C.J. Taylor This is a very short book, like 34 pages I think, 
with huge font and many creative and colorful pictures. You could easily finish this book in less than an hour. The stories were insightful, and even funny at times. 78 out of 100. Definitely an amazing bedtime read. 7th. Nordic Tales. Folklores from Norway, Sweden, Finland, Iceland, and Denmark by Folktale. I have never found much interest in the fairy tales as told when I was younger. Well, my parents never told me fa fairy tales, but I made more of the ones that the teacher would read to the class in first and second grade. Like, there's so many different versions of Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, and the only ones I even found the slightest bit, bit interesting was when the princesses would die. Not to mention how the stories being Disney-fied just takes all the mysticality out of them. So I decided to go to the library and send, sign out a book on fairy tales that aren't North American. And my god, they were amazing. There was actually some originality for once, instead of some, instead of the same old 70 different versions and outcomes for Snow White. It was nice to read these stories before going to bed, especially since they're not that long, so I'm not up late just to finish one story. 87 out of 100. You should all check them out. 8th. Just Friends by Tiffany Pickock. To be honest, most people who read this book will probably gain trust issues, but the drama within this book is still amazing. Even a friend of mine and I would joke about one of the characters and think of different ways to torture him. I would even send him pictures of certain paragraphs and be like, this fuck, this absolute fucking asshole with his audacity. I was certainly a little scared that the main love interest was going to leave the girl in town the moment that he got the chance. So I was definitely happy that he didn't. I was all smiley and giddy during my break at work once I finished this book because of how amazing the ending was. Before I was even thinking of how cliche and cringy it was most likely going to be. But it was actually kind of cute. The author brought in a few real world issues in terms of like people's personal lives too. And I believe that it was all executed nicely. 89 out of 100. I'd recommend it to you all. It's so sweet and funny. Alright. Now that we're close to the end of this episode, the book that I'm currently reading is Foundation by Isaac Asimov. The star was pretty good, but so far it seems that the author is bringing in a little too much of the unknown world right off the bat, instead of blending into it. But I'll let you all know. Before I bring this meeting to an end, I just want to mention that I'm currently also working on scripts for a few collaborations, so keep an eye out for them. Check out my novels Death Chill, Flame Rip, and Arctic Blaze on Amazon and Kobo, link in the description. Check out the Creative Writing Club Discord server in the description. Check out the Creative Writing Club Instagram at creative writing underscore club. Check out my personal Instagram at dark underscore night underscore wolves. And let us all enjoy a few weeks of relaxation once again. I hope y'all have an absolutely phenomenal day.